Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how to make a very basic fluid simulation in Houdini. This tutorial is beginner friendly so you can follow it without any problem. So in the first part of the tutorial we have created the rocks. So if you want you can check the first part of the tutorial to recreate it or you can download the project file with the link in the descriptions. So now let's add a new geometry node but this time for the fluid simulations. So let's add a new geometry node and you can rename it something like fluid sim. So now you can hide the rocks. You can go inside this rocks geometry. So here you can copy the nulls at the end of the branch. So you can copy that with Ctrl C. Now you can go back to the sub level by clicking on this little object icon. And now you can dive into the fluid sim geometry container. And now you can import the rocks inside this geo container. So let's add an object merge. And here you can paste the nulls that we have copied before for the rocks here on the object one field. So in that case, we can import our rocks into this new geometry container. So if you want, you can make your fluid simulation here into the first rocks geometry container. But in my case, I want to make two different geometry container, one for the rocks, for the procedural rocks that we have created before, and one for the fluid. So here we can work on the second geometry container. So now we have our rocks here. So we want to convert this rock as a collider geometry for the fluid. So to do that, we have a node called collision source. So this node will give us two outputs. The first output is the geometry output. So you can add a null here and you can rename it something like call geo. And later for the fluid simulation, we can import this null as a collider geometry. And for the second output of the collision source here, we have the VDB. And here we can add a null and we can rename it call vol for the collider volume because later on the DOP network, we can use the collision geometry and we can use the collision volume to get a better collision between the geometry and the fluid. So here you can see we don't have any resolution on our volume. So to change that, you can select the collision source and you can go here to the volume tab and you can decrease the voxel size to something like 0.01. So in that case, we can keep all the detail of our geometry here for the volume. So now we have our collider object for the fluid simulations. So we can select all these nodes and you can put them under a little network to make everything organized. So you can click on this little icon and you can rename it something like collision. So if you want, you can change the color of this network by selecting it and press C on the keyboard to open the little color palette here. And you can put that to black. So now we have our collider object, but we need to create a geometry as a source for the fluid simulations. So for that, you can use any geometry, but in my case, I will import a spheres. So if you want, you can use a box or any other geometry. So here for the spheres, I will change it from polygon mesh to polygon. And I will increase the frequency to 10 and I will decrease the uniform scale to 0.1. So you can change the settings of the spheres at any time if you want to change the scale or other settings. But in my case, I will keep it as it is. So now we want to convert this geometry as a source for the fluid. And to do that, we have a node called flip dop source. And this node will create the particles based on our geometry to create the fluid simulation later. So at the moment, we can put the particle separation to 0.01 and we can put the voxel size to 0.02. But later we can change those settings to increase the resolution of the fluid simulations. So now we can add a null here to specify this is the output for the source and we can rename it out source. So now we have our source object here on the right and we have our collider object here on the left. So like before, we can put that under a network. So let's select everything. And here you can click on this little icon. And if you want, you can put that in black to make it everything organized. So now we can create our DOP network to create the fluid simulations. So let's add a DOP network. And here you can rename it SIM. So we can dive inside. And here for the fluid simulation, we need, of course, a flip solver. We need a flip object. We need a volume source. And here you can plug your flip object here on the first input of the flip solver. You can plug the volume source here on the last input of the flip solver and you can plug that to the output of the dotnet. So now you can see uh, at the moment we have a box at the center of the scenes and this is due to the flip object. So you can select this node and here you can remove this uh, default cube. So you can select everything and remove that. In our case, we will use our custom geometry as a source. So to import our geometry as a source for the fluid here into the dotnet, you can select the volume source node. And here you can go to the sub path. You can select the little uh, icon here on the right and you can go to the object level. You can select your geometry. So in my case, I will use my flip fluid sim geometry. And here I will use the out source that we have created before. 
So I will select this nulls and I will click on accept. And here I will go to initialize and I will initialize the source flip. In that case, it will create the attribute for the fluid simulations. So at the moment, you can see that we have a little spheres as a preview for the fluid sim. So this is not the best. So to change that, you can go to the flip object. You can go to the guide tab. And here you can go to the particle tab and you can change that from sprite to particles. And now you can see that we have some little particles here. So at the moment, you can see the scale of the scenes is very huge. So to change that, you can go to the flip solver. And here you can go to volume motions and you can go to volume limit. And here you can change the scale of the scenes. So by default, the global container here is at 50, which is very huge. So in our case, we can change it and we can make it to something like five, seven and five. And you can press H to center the scenes. And now you can see that we have the little source here and we have the global container here in pink. So it's a good idea to hide this from the scenes because we don't need it anymore. So now we can disable this little option to hide it from the scenes. And now we have something a bit better to work with. So now we need to import our rocks into the .NET to have a collider object for the source. So to do that, you can add a static object node. And here for the static object, the first thing is to import the geometry. So here you can go to the subpass. You can click on this little icon here. And you can import your collider geo, which is the first output of the collision source node that we have created before. So click on accept. Now you can go to the collision tab. You can change that to volume collisions. And here you can change the mode and you can put that to volume sample. And here for the proxy volume, we can use the second output of the collision source. So you can click on this little icon and you can use the collision volume node. So now you can merge that to the simulations. So let's add the merge node. You can plug that here and you can plug the static object here on the merge. So now you can see that we have our collider object here on the dot net, but we need to have the static object here on the left. So to do that, you can select the merge node and you can press shift and R to reverse it. Or otherwise you can just invert it like this. So you can put that on the top and it will go to the left part of the merge. So at the moment we have that, but the source is at the center of the rocks. So we need to change the position of the source. So to do that, we have to go back to the SOP level. So you can click on the fluid sim object. And here we can add a transform node to move our um, source a bit up on the Y axis. So let's add a transform node. So here for this transform node, you can rename it something like Y pose because we will move this one up on the Y axis. And here for the value, I will put the value at something like 2.4. And now you can see that we have the source here on the top. So now we can go back to the dot net. And now you can see we have our source here and we have our collider object. So now we need to add a force because at the moment, if I click on play, nothing will happen. We need to add a gravity force. So we can add the gravity force just after the merge. Imagine having access to over 40 hours of exclusive Houdini tutorials. And that library keeps growing every month with brand new content. On Arda Labs, you'll find in-depth Houdini tutorials covering motion design, simulations, product visualization, and more. Plus, you get access to all project files so you can follow along step by step. And right now, we're offering an extra 20% off the annual membership, on top of the 10% discount already included when compared to the monthly plan. This exclusive deal is available for the first 30 people, so don't miss out. Click the link below, your 20% discount is applied automatically. Secure your spot before it's gone. So now we can link the settings of the flip source here with the dotnet. So to do that, you can go to the dotnet, you can select the flip object, and here you have the particle separations. So you can take this value with right click copy parameter. You can go back to the SOP and here you can go to the flip source and you can paste relative reference here on this one. In that case, we can link the value from the DOP to the SOP. So here you can right click paste relative reference and you can do the same here, paste relative reference and you can multiply this one by two because this is the value of the grid scale. And in our case, we can keep this one by default and you can, you can see the grid scale is here. So the value is at two. So this is the reason why we can multiply the particle separation by two. So now we can go back to the top and here we can increase the resolution because for now we have only 0.1. So let's put the value at 0.01 like we did before. And now we can click on play and see the result of the flip sim. And at the moment we have this result. So at the moment we don't have any viscosity on the fluid. So to enable the viscosity on the fluid simulation, you can select the flip solver. And here you can go to the volume motions. So first let's change this one to swirly. It's a bit better for like viscous fluid. Now let's go to the viscosity tab and you can enable the viscosity. So if you want, you can enable the viscosity by an attribute. But in our case, we will only set one and single value for the viscosity. So we don't need to enable the viscosity by attribute. 
And to enable the viscosity value, you can go to the flip object and you can go to the physical tab. And here you have the viscosity value. So in my case, I will put the viscosity to 50 and I will also increase the density to something like 5000. I think it's a good idea to um, increase this value a bit to have better drip shapes. And now we can see the result of the flip sim. So now we have this result and you can see that the fluid is a bit more viscous now. So you can go to the flip solver and here you can go to the surface tensions and you can enable the surface tensions and put the value at something quite low. So maybe you can put that to five. And here you can enable the surface tension blur and you can put that to 0.01. But now we have something very straight on the particles of the source. So to change that, you can go to the SOP one more time. So you can click on the flip sim object. And here you can select your flip source. And you can see here we can change the seed to change the point position of our particles. So to make it um, nice, you can use the $FF variables. So in that case, it, it will change this value at each frame. And this will avoid getting some like stepping uh, particle stuff on the fluid simulation. So I recommend you to put that under the jitter seed value. So now you can see here on the source, the point position is changing at every frame and it will be a bit better at the end. So now you can select the flip solver. You can go to the particle motions and here you can add an ID attribute and you can go to the receding tab and you can disable the receding. So now you can go to the sub step tab and you can decrease the time scale to something like 0.5. In that case, you have something a bit more slow. And for the minimum sub step, you can put it at two and the maximum sub step at four. As it is very basic fluid simulation, you don't have to go very crazy here on the minimum and maximum sub step. So you can keep them quite low. And also, if you want, as we are using a viscous fluid, you can go to the flip solver. You can go to the volume motion tab and you can go to the viscosity tab. And here you can enable the option slip on collisions and you can keep the value by default at 0.1. In that case, you have something uh, slipping over our geometry and it can be a good idea in our case. So I think it's pretty much it to set the flip simulations. But now the flip is very straight and very bowing. So maybe we can add a bit of motions on the sub on the source. So in that case, we can create something more interesting in terms of motions for the fluid. So let's go back to the sub by clicking on the fluid sim uh, object. So here, let's set the velocity down on the y axis. So to do that, you can select the flip source. And here we can add an attribute wrangle. So here we can create a velocity vectors. So we can type v at v is equal to set. And here you can put zero on the x axis. You can put minus one on the y axis and you can put zero on the z axis. So now to visualize the velocity vector, you can add a blast node. And here for the blast node, we can remove our surface. So in that case, it will keep only the points. And now you can go to the blast and you can go to the information tab and you can enable the velocity value. And you can see that we have the velocity pointing down on the y axis as we have set the velocity here to minus one on the y axis. So now let's add a transform node. But this time we can add a bit of motion to our source because for now it's very static. So before that we have putting the spheres here up on the y axis, we can add a bit of motion when the, the source is at the center of the scenes. And here we can use a sine and cosine function here on the rotations. So let's start by adding a sine function here on the Z axis for the rotations. So we can type sine and here we can type dollar FF. So in that case, the sine function will move over time and you can multiply that by 10 and then you can close the bracket here and you can multiply that by 10 one more time. And now we can see the result of the sine. So you can go here and you can click on play. And you can see we have added a bit of sine motion here on the Z axis. So if you want, you can just make your fluid simulation like this. But in my case, I want to have like a circle motion. So to get this kind of circle motion for the spheres, I need to use a cosine function for the X axis. So let's use a cosine functions. Let's use dollar FF like before. Multiply it by 10 and multiply everything by 10 one more time. And now you can see we have created a circle motion for the spheres. So of course it's up to you. You can use any type of motions for these fluid simulations. And here, if you want, you can rename this transform node to rotations. So here you can change the value of the cosine and the sine function if you want. So the first value here is the speed and the second value is the amplitude. So if you want to make it faster, you can put that to 20 and you can, you can multiply also for the sine functions. So instead of 10, you can use 20. And now we have something faster but we have the same amplitude. But if you want to make it something a bit slower, you can put five and you can put that to 20 to have a bit more motions, but slower. And same for this one, instead of 20, you can put five and you can put that to 20. And now we have something with strong amplitude, but very slow in the speed. So 
So let's see the result. So in that case, you can have lots of control over the motion of the fluid. So in my case, I will just put the amplitude to 6 and I will put the speed to 15. And same for the sign, 15 and 6. So now we can go back to the dot net. And here you can select your flip object. Of course, you can hide the Vs of the velocity by clicking on this. And here you can decrease the particle separation to have something a bit more high res. If you decrease it too much, you will get something very slow to calculate, but you'll get very high detail on the fluid. So in my case, I will use 0.0025 for the value of the particle separations. So that's pretty much it for the settings of the fluid simulations. So now you can go back to the SOP by clicking on the fluid sim. Now let's add a DOP import field. So here you can drag and drop your DOP network here on the DOP network field for the DOP import fields. So you can drag and drop this one here on the first one. And for the DOP node, we have to import our flip object. So you can click on that. Here you can select your fluid sim DOP net and you can select the flip object one. Click on accept. And here for the preset, you can change it to flip fluid. Now you can see we have imported our flip simulation into the SOPs. So now you can use a fluid compressed node. And here for the fluid compress, we have to use the same particle separation as we have set on the dot net. So you can go back here, take the value, right click, copy parameter. You can go back here and paste it here, paste relative reference. And now you can put that in cache with a file cache node, and you can rename it fluid simulation tutorials. So here you can change it from constructed to explicit, and you can put that to cache and dollar $OS folder. So in that case, it will create a new folder for the cache and a new subfolder with the name of the node, which is fluid simulation tutorials. So now you can put that in cache for, let's say, 144 frame. So you can right click, delete channel, and put that in cache for 144 frame. Of course, it's up to you. And now you can just click on save to disk and it will run the simulations. So in my case, I have these simulations. So at the moment, we have this kind of blocked stuff. So now let's add an unpack point. So now we have some points and we have to convert that to VDB. And then we can convert that back to geometry. So let's use the VDB from particles. And here for the settings of the VDB from particles, we can put the voxel size to 0.05. And here you can put the minimum radius in voxels to 0.1. So now let's add a VDB reshape SDF. And you can put that to delete. And you can put the value here at 1.5. Of course, it's up to you. It depends on the result at the end. Now let's add a VDB smooth SDF. You can keep the first one by default. And let's add a second one for the VDB smooth SDF. And you can put the second one to Gaussians. And you can keep the iteration to 4. So now let's convert this VDB back to polygons. So let's use the convert VDB node. And here you can put that to polygon. So here you can tweak the value on the VDB reshape SDF. So it depends on your geometry, but sometimes you need to increase this value or decrease it. It just depends on the final result. So in my case, the value at 1.5 works pretty nice in these simulations. So now we can add a normal node. And here for the normals, you can put that in points and you can change this to um, face area. So now we can add a smooth node. We can add, add the smooth for the positions and we can also add the smooth for the normals. And here you can increase the strength to something like 25. And now you can add a null to specify this is the output for the fluids and you can rename it out simulations. And here you can also add a file cache node just uh, before the nulls. And here you can rename it something like simulations geo and you can change it to explicit, you can put that under the cache folder and new $OS folder. In that case, it will create a new subfolder based on the name of the node. And here you can put that in cache for uh, your entire simulations frame range. And you can click on save to disk. So if you want, you can use this to create your render in Houdini, or you can also use the ROP Alambic output if you want to render it in uh, Blender or Cinema 4D. So you can plug that here and you can just e export that as um, alambic. So you can put that to frame range and you can set your frame range here for the first frame and your last frame. And here you can click on save to disk. So in that case, you can use just this geometry in Blender or in Cinema 4D. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check Archivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Archi files membership. See you in the next one. Bye.